Hi everyone, it's Camille and today we are going to create our first crypto trading strategy in Elixir. If you want to follow along, feel free to read the description below. If you like the video, leave the thumbs up. Let's start by creating a new supervised application. It will contain all the logic related to Naive's trading strategy. Back to the ID, the first file we'll create will be trader.ex. Our trader module will use the GenServer behavior. To follow the convention, we'll write a startling function. The GenServer startling function will do all the heavy lifting for us. The first argument for it is a callback module, then initial arguments and lastly options. Last required part will be the init function that will get called to initialize our server's state. At this moment we will just assign whatever startling passed to it. Next, we will focus on modeling the state of our server. We will define a new struct that will hold that information, the symbol that we would like to trade, any current buy and sell orders placed by the bot, profit expectations as well as tick size which we will retrieve from Binance in a second. Our strategy won't work without symbol, expected profit or tick size, so we should enforce those keys in our struct. We can now pattern match in headers of start link and init functions to confirm that the past arguments are maps. Inside the init function we will fetch tick size based on the past symbol. We will write that function below in a few moments, but in the meantime we will modify the result of the init function to set our new struct as the server's state. To retrieve tick size information from the Binance we will be using its API. The easiest way to do it is to use a wrapper called Binance.ex. We'll be using it together with the decimal module that will allow us to do precise calculations. Lastly, we will need to add our initial streamer app as a dependency, as for the time being, we'll be using its structs inside our strategy. Getting back to the trader, now is the time to implement fetch tick size function. We will use getExchangeInfo function from the Binance module and deep dive into the result to find tick size for our symbol. The structure is a little bit complex, after writing this code feel free to play with it using Elixir's interactive shell. We have just reached the stage when we need to decide on how exactly our trading strategy will work. In a nutshell, our trader will be getting trade events sequentially and make decision based on its own state and the event's contents. To simplify things a bit, we will focus on a trader in three different states. A new trader without orders, a trader with buy order placed, and a trader with sell order placed. A new trader won't have any open orders, which we can confirm by pattern matching on the buy order field from its state. From the incoming event we can get the current price, which we'll use in the buy order that the trader will place. Next, after placing the buy order, trader will be pattern matching to confirm that the incoming event has filled his order, otherwise ignoring it. When this will happen, it means that it can now place the sell order based on the expected profit and the buy price. Finally, in very similar fashion to the previous state, the trader will be pattern matching to confirm that the incoming event has filled his sell order, otherwise ignoring it. When this will happen, full cycle has ended and the trader can exit now. Enough theory, back in the editor we will cover new trader scenario by pattern matching on buy order field from its state. For the time being we'll keep the quantity hard coded as this episode is getting really long. Don't worry, it's a journey and I'm sure we will get this sorted out in one of the next episodes. 
As we confirm that this is a new trader, we can safely progress to placing a new buy order. We just need to remember to update the state as otherwise it will go on a shopping spree as every next incoming event will cause further buy orders. With that out of the way, we can now move on to monitor events that match our buy order ID and quantity to confirm that our buy order got filled. In a separate function we will calculate sell price based on buy price, profit expectations and tick size. We'll write that one in a moment. We can now proceed to placing a sell order using calculated sell price and quantity retrieved from buy order. Again, don't forget to update the state, as otherwise it will keep on placing sell orders for every incoming event. To calculate the sell price, we will need to use precise math. To achieve that, we will use the decimal module, so let's alias it at the top of the file. To calculate the sell price, I use the following formula, which gets me pretty close, but please feel free to leave a comment below if you have a better solution. First, we would like to convert all the numbers to decimal structs so it will be easier to work with them. Here I'm hard coding the fee, which will get refactored in one of the future episodes. I start by calculating the real buy price. It's a sum of quoted buy price together with the fee that we paid on top of it. Next, I enlarge the originally paid price by profit interval that we are targeting. We will be charged a fee for selling, so I need to add it on top of the target price. Binance won't accept any quote prices that aren't divisible by symbols tick sizes, so we need to normalize them on our side. Getting back to handling incoming events, we can now add a clause for a trader that wants to confirm that his sell order was filled. When the sell order was successfully filled, there's nothing else to do for the trader so it can send an exit signal to itself to terminate the process. A final callback function that we will need to write will just ignore all incoming events as they were not matched by any of the previous pattern matches. We will update an interface to our application by modifying the naive module to allow us to send an event to the trader. Here we will also use the fact that we registered our trader process with a name. To glue our apps together for the time being, we'll modify the streamer process to call our new trader interface directly. We will also use the logger module to reduce the logging output.
Inside the main config of our umbrella project, we need to define access details for our Binance account. I added those behind the scenes and left empty strings on the video just for reference. We will also set the login level to info just to keep the application output readable. Now it's time to give our bot a spin. Let's start Elixir's interactive shell. Don't worry about the compilation warnings. Again, as I said it before, this is work in progress and we will improve a lot of things in future videos. First, we need to start the trader process with a map containing symbol and profit interval. Here I'm passing sub zero profit interval just to be able to quickly showcase the full trade cycle. Please remember that you will lose a little bit of money this way and you need about 20 USDT in your wallet to make this work. Next we will start streaming on the same symbol. Please be aware that this will cause an immediate reaction in the trader process. We can see that our trader placed a buy order at 18.26 cents per XRP. It was filled in under 200 milliseconds, so it placed a sell order at 18.11 cents, which was also filled in under 200 milliseconds. This way the trader finished the trade cycle and sent an exit message to itself. If you are still watching this and you followed along, congratulations, you just created your first crypto trading strategy in Elixir, which is quite cool. Yes, it has some downsides to it, but you need to remember this is iterative process and in each episode we will top up our current code with some fixes and some new ideas. If you like that one, leave the thumbs up, subscribe and share. Thanks.